Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, check this out. This is a new cellular router I just got in. It is a MoFi 5500. And so this is one of their newer units that has their best and greatest uh, cellular router in there. And it can do 5G. It can do all the ultra wideband stuff. So, you know, I did not buy this and I did not get it sponsored to me either. This is actually a unique situation where one of my viewers reached out and said, I see you haven't tested this MoFi unit and I have one sitting around I would love to let you borrow it to do the testing so I've paid for the shipping to get up here for me so I can do some testing so thank you Lou for lending this device for me and this testing to help all you viewers out there understand all the different options you know I've tested a lot of the Verizon and T-Mobile gateways that they have tried to hack them get as much as I can out of them it honestly got very um, tiresome to try to make those things do everything you want them to so I eventually sort of gave up there and said, let me look at some third-party routers. So I've tested Peplink. I've tested Chester Tech Repairs um, router that's back there underneath that thumbs up, which I, of course, encourage you to hit down below if you like this video. And for this unit here, they have several different types of, um, they're still called the 5500, but they have different modems or setups. So um, you do need to pay attention to that a little bit, especially if you're very, um, honed in on getting the best beater if you have a specific band you want to make sure you get. So their uh, bottom end one, I guess you would call it that, is a Category 7, so a Cat 7 cellular modem, and that's going to limit you as far as um, what type of connection you get. It still can get good speed, you know, uh, hundreds of megabits per second of speed is still theoretically possible with it, but um, you'll start to notice that you might be limited on what bands you can get. So this one here has the EM9191 um, modem in it, and that allows you to get the latest 5G bands that are out there, uh, at least the sub-6 gigahertz bands out there. So that includes T-Mobile's um, N41 5G Ultra Capacity. That includes Verizon C-Bands, so their N77 bands. And let's go through a little bit on the outside of this unit, and then we'll hop into their interface and show you what it looks like as far as um, you know what kind of settings can you do and I will say this I actually am very impressed with how many settings they do offer right here on top of it they tell you it is business class and um, at first I um, honestly was a little bit balking at that but going into here they do have a lot of settings that are impressive so um, after we go in the settings then we're obviously going to test it and see what kind of speeds we get and uh, I might compare it even against this Chester device or one of my stock gateways as well. So for the outside, these four skinny antennas, these are the Wi-Fi antennas. Now this is a Wi-Fi 5 unit, um, which is maybe a little bit dated nowadays. You know, Wi-Fi 6 is kind of um, the new expectation. Wi-Fi 6E would be um, even better, but that's a m much fewer and far between. And then these big paddles that are out here, these are for the cellular uh, signals and with them being four of them, this is the CAT20 setup and so that means that um, it has a 4x4 MIMO with these four large antennas. If you get one of the other units like a Category um, 7 one, it will only have two uh, of these or they do actually make a dual modem one where you can get two Category 7 modems in there and then that will go back to the four um, antennas but it's only two per modem there so on the back side now we have the uh, ports and so you can see you have the regular blue port which is typically the WAN port so that would be if you want to connect to uh, some other um, modem like a cable fiber that kind of um, support um, would go in through here to give you an ISP you have your yellow ones for your LAN these are all gigabit ports so they can handle um, you know, pretty much any speed that you can uh, throw at it from a cellular standpoint. And then uh, on the red one there, I actually don't know exactly what um, all is different about that. It says console, so they have a USB port, so they do allow USB tethering. So if you have a hotspot or some other device that uses USB for um, tethering, then this can actually leverage that right there. The other interesting thing is that in addition to the power port here that they have for the wall wart, the AC adapter, they also have a uh, small DCN um, that would be maybe used for if you're in a, um, a travel trailer RV and you have 12 volt supply, uh, there's no point in converting it to 110 volts and then converting it back down to 12 volts so you can 
um, kind of hardwire this into your um, mobile setup there. Now, what else they have is on the side here, this is where your SIM card goes, and they have two SIM card slots. Again, uh, they do have a version that has two modems, but this one only has one modem, but it still has two slots that it can leverage. And what it's going to do is give you kind of redundancy or a backup SIM, or let's say one of the SIM runs out of data, um, it can uh, go and use the other SIM card. But this one, like I said, only has one modem, so it's one SIM at a time. And um, of note is it is a full size SIM card. I have a nano SIM card around here somewhere. All right, here is the nano SIM card size. It's tiny, it's hard for me to even hold it up to you guys. Um, but that's what typically the phones have in them. And this one needs a full size, but I have like little adapters that I put them into. And then that's how you can, um, you can use it uh, in there. So I will have product links for this unit, for um, the Chester unit, those SIM card adapters, all kinds of stuff down in the video description. So uh, take a peek there if there's something you see in this video that you would like um, to look more into or to purchase yourself. So let's go into the web interface and just see what the settings look like and then we can go do some speed test um, upstairs. All right, so I connected to the Wi-Fi of the unit. I go in here and I log in uh, to the default, which is just root, and then admin is the password. And here is what we get. Now, I do get signal down here, but I'm in my basement, so I don't get great signal uh, from a cellular standpoint. But we can go over here to the um, left side, and we can click on these uh, drop-down menus to see all these different options. Now, of note, I did just update the firmware on this unit, so I think the firmware was actually released like two days ago. So, um, as of February of 2023, this is the latest um, option that they have for this, and they do um, go through and update those or improve those over time. So, um, I'm not going to go into too much of the status part. I mean, they have some graphs and stuff that you can look at, but really what I want to go to is um, the internal modem and go into this configuration setup here. This is where you're going to go in there. And what's in there right now is a T-Mobile SIM card. And so this is what you would want to set up where, like Verizon, you'd have to set the, um, the APN. Other ones, you might have to set the APN as well. Most of them are blank for the um, authentication and the username stuff. But you can set up your um, MTU size. You can set up um, what type of, you know, you're going to support IPv6, which I would certainly encourage you to do. I think by default, it's not on. But I checked the box there for IPv6, and then I dropped this down uh, to allow it to do both um, uh, 4 and 6. And then um, there's some other settings in here as well that you can go. And this would be things like uh, if you don't want it to connect to 5G, you can actually tell it um, to change its preference there or its order of selection. You can also change the mode, and this is where you can tell it to only do LTE or only do standalone 5G. Um, and then 3G is gone, um, you know, in the U.S., so you, no point in picking that. Um, but here you can go in there and tell it if you want to do 5G uh, NSA, which is non-standalone, or 5G SA. So that's some of the cool stuff that these third-party, all these third-party routers I've tested, Peplink, uh, the Chester, and this um, MoFi, all allow you to pick those selections that none of the stock gateways let you um, adjust there. And then here you can also... Um, you'll see the uh, phone number, IMEI, and that kind of stuff is in here as well. Okay, so you can do a speed test. Um, I'm not going to do that down here in the basement, um, but here you can go to a band lock setting. So this allows you to um, go in and pick specific bands if you want to lock them. Now, um, I like the look of this um, user interface, but it is a little bit slow, as you saw when I go from you know, one page to another. It's a little bit clunky from that standpoint, but I guess it's not too bad. Um, so I can go in here and tell it to do custom bands if I want to, and then I can just uncheck um, which ones I don't want it to do. What I do like is they have the buttons here for um, clear um, and uh, select all, which is just a nice feature because sometimes you'll go through and um, you know I don't want to uncheck all of them but if I um, by hand but if I want to do um, you know clear all of these bands here then I can press that button it will go in uncheck them all and I can say I only want to get onto um, let's call it band 2 and then now I'm locked to that band so that's that's one way to go about doing it but uh, for me I'm going to leave them all selected for now for the testing and then we'll go in there and uh, maybe adjust it if we 
If we see one that uh, appears to be slower than the other or not preferred, we can hop off of it. All right, and then uh, if we go over here, you can get your, um, your signal strength uh, status, and it takes a second here to collect the data. And you can see that I have very strong LTE data down here in the basement. It's showing uh, band uh, B2. And then um, it's telling me if I'm getting carrier aggregation, I'm not down here. Um, oh, and there it just popped over to 5G. And so that is um, in my basement. I don't get great, but we're going to go upstairs, and that's really where we're going to see um, a, a big change, hopefully, in the signal strength um, that we get. All right, so I went over now to the advanced signal strength. And this, it's a little bit harder to read, but the good news is um, it is... Um, straightforward I guess to go through this and skim through it and see what um, data that you want to look at and that would be things like what my um, you know that 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 line 12 there that PCC that's my primary um, cellular connection there and I can see that my um, RSSI and RSRP are there and if I keep going down to like row 17 and 18 I can see further information on my RSRQ and my signal to noise um, and then also keep going down, I can see that I'm on um, NR5G. And so it's bouncing around a little bit, and right when I was trying to talk, it went away. But line 20 there is N71, so that's telling me that's my 5G signal. If I go back up to line 6 there, it showed me I'm on B66 for my LTE and my, my 4G band there. So that's where you can get your settings. Not the best laid out. Um, it is a little bit cryptic to read through there, but it does have all that data, and it's fairly quick to get. You just go to that that tab there. Now in the system, um, this is where you can do all your, um, you can do internet speed tests all kind of built in, which is nice. You can also do it up here higher under this uh, internal modem. Um, firmware, logs, all that kind of stuff, um, it has a lot of options in there. Let's go to services though. This is where you can set up things like um, your DHCP, your DNS, if you want custom ones there. You can set up a dynamic DNS. That's where um, you know you can use a service that converts a, a URL to what your IP address is, so you can get access to your house from outside of <clears throat> outside of your LAN. And speaking of LAN, we can go to our network, and this is where you can go in there and really change a lot of stuff. They do have um, Wi-Fi bridge or repeater uh, functions. They have um, port. Filtering, they have um, you know lots of different um, options that are really helpful, and that's where I think it really gets kind of its business um, credentials from is is the number of features and op options they have in here. I won't go through each one. What I will say is you know the ones that I would use most likely is this DMZ setting, uh, which stands for Demilitarized Zone, uh, which maybe doesn't sound like a router feature, but um, what this does is it sends all of the internet traffic to a specific IP address. So you would do that for um, having this as like a modem and you want to send all the traffic to your own, let's call it a mesh system, you would send it to the main node there. And, and this would um, effectively allow you to not change the settings on the MOFI for uh, port forwarding or any of that kind of stuff instead you can do that or you know static um, um, you know IP addresses you could have that already on your existing network and you would just send all the data uh, straight to that so that's how I would um, typically do it but they also do have an IP pass through I'll talk a little bit about why that can be um, a little bit more trouble sometimes than it's worth all right and then in the uh, firewall settings now it also has the uh, the static routes that you can set up but in the firewall you can um, decide exactly how you want um, this set up. You can have different zones that it shows here so that you can isolate different parts of your network. And then the top here, um, there's more tabs to actually pick through uh, for port forwarding, uh, for different traffic rules um, that you can set up as well as for custom rules. So if you're really advanced, you can go in here and actually put in um, some custom rules um, as in there as well. All right, so it also has SQM um, quality of service that you can set up. This might be another thing that you'd be interested, in, especially if you're hurting for uh, network speed. If you don't have good cellular connection and you need some help there, you can use the smart cube management to really help with um, making sure all your devices get their fastest speed uh, possible. All right, so now we can go to um, bandwidth and filters. You can just see here, you can set limits, you can um, have specific devices have um, uh, 
limits for how fast they go, the time of day, scheduling, that kind of stuff. Um, you can block specific uh, MAC addresses or devices. Uh, you can block specific websites, all kinds of stuff like that. And then in this um, Mophie business, you can see their IP pass-through that you can set up. You can do um, their failover load balancing that, um, you know, if you had a couple different WAN setups, so if you had like something plugged in via Ethernet versus the cellular modem or maybe the USB tether, you can actually set up um, failover or balancing between those types of devices. And then lastly, they do have VPN services, and they have a lot of them. If I scroll down here, um, kind of pre-populated in there that you could go in there and, um, and set up. So let's go upstairs. Let's do some tests on it. I want to see how it really compares speed-wise relative to a stock gateway or relative to like this Chester gateway. All right, so to start this test up on the third floor where I keep my gateways for the best signal, I'm going to compare just to stock gateways, no external antennas that I, um, I, I do have up here, but I have them unplugged. So we'll start with a T-Mobile Arcadian gateway, and we'll just see how that stock one does. I'm connected directly to that gateway with no other system in between. And we'll just see what kind of speeds it gets here. I'm on N41 band. I'm about a mile away from the tower for reference, but you know um, your speeds obviously will vary based off your specific signal. But this gives you a baseline of what I get with just a stock T-Mobile um, gateway. All right, let's switch over to the MoFi. All right, so now I'm on the MoFi unit, and you can see I'm on N41 for my 5G signal, and I have a B2 LTE base signal. So let's go over here and see what kind of speeds that gives me. Now, this is a basically um, sort of default uh, settings here on the MoFi. Okay, so certainly not as fast as just the stock gateway. Let's go over to the Chester unit and just see how that one does. All right, so now this is the Chester gateway, and we can just see here that we are on band 66 and N41. So let's just see what kind of speeds it gets. Okay, very good speeds there. All right, so there we have it. Those are the test results now that... Uh, T-Mobile Arcadian one looks like it got me 227 down and 26 up. This MoFi one got me 134 down and 15 up. And then the um, Chester 5G gateway here got 285 down and 34 up. That was all with just the stock antennas on all of them and in auto settings. Now these have band locking capabilities that I showed. And I did mess with that a little bit. I could not get 5G standalone to work. Actually, on here, it was not getting a signal when I did that. Um, I'm not sure why it was doing that on the MoFi one. But even on this uh, Chester device, it was not giving me faster speeds than that. So those are my best speeds that I got tonight. And it always varies. But so far to date, this Chester one has always given me the fastest speeds of any of the gateways I've had, which is really impressive. Now, to be honest, it does lack some features in the firmware. It's a little bit clunkier. I really hate the way I have to type in the AT commands to get the um, all the cell signal information, but it allows you to do IMEI revise, and it is the fastest one I've had to date. So um, that's my vote for speed. But if ultimate speed is not your key driver, and instead you like some of the extra settings that this MoFi one does have, or even the Peplink one, you know, that is the upside to these units. Uh, Price-wise, you know, this Chester one is, is cheaper than these as well. So uh, it's up to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions or inputs or your experience, feel free to put them down in the comment section down below. Like the video and consider subscribing to my channel to see more videos like this.